So as you know that Twitter pretty recently uh, open sourced their entire recommendation algorithm in GitHub and just yesterday Langchain published an official blog uh, where it applied Langchain on that repository to effectively run a GPT-4 on that repository so that you can ask questions and get answers from that and in this video I will go over uh, the various steps of that uh, notebook that Langchain published so that you can apply the same procedure and the same steps uh, on any code repository and, and again effectively run a GPT-4 on that code repository to ask questions and uh, get detailed answers on various aspects. First quickly understand the overall workflow of this exercise because you can apply these uh, same procedure on any repository that may be even millions of lines of code and that's the magic uh, that you are no more limited by the GPT-4 uh, context window of uh, 8000 tokens or 32000 tokens whatever it could be and uh, so yeah so let's uh, quickly go through these uh, uh, documentation that I'm reading from the Langchain's official page. Uh, code understanding. Langchain is a useful tool designed to parse GitHub code repositories by leveraging vector stores, conversational retrieval chain, and GPT-4. It can answer questions in the context of an entire GitHub repository or generate new code. This documentation page outlines the essential components of the system and guides using Langchain for better code comprehension, contextual question answering, and code generation in GitHub repositories. All right, conversational retrieval chain, that's the main concept here. Uh, that is a retrieval focused system that interacts with the data stored in a vector store utilizing advanced techniques like context error filtering and ranking. It retrieves the most relevant code snippets and information for a given user query. Conversational retrieval chain is engineered to deliver high quality pertinent result while considering conversation history and context. So Langchain workflow for code understanding uh, are these five following section or following steps and we will be actually implementing all these five uh, steps while applying the whole process on uh, Twitter algorithm uh, repository that we'll see in a second. So these are the main five steps index the uh, code base, uh, clone the repository, the target repository, load all uh, files within, chunk the files and execute the indexing process. Optionally, you can skip this step and use an already indexed dataset. Then embedding and code store. Code snippets are embedded using a code error embedding model and stored in a vector store. Query understanding. GPT-4 processes user queries grasping the context and extracting relevant details. Construct the retriever. Conversational retrieval chain searches a vector store to identify the most relevant code snippets for a given query. Then build the conversational chain. Customize the retriever settings and define any user-defined filters as needed. Finally, ask question. Define a list of questions to ask about the code base and then use conversational retrieval chain to generate context our answer. The large language model in this case GPT-4 and uh, you can also use any model in fact uh, uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo or anything else like Codex etc. So, so the um, LLM uh, GPT-4 here generates comprehensive context our answers based on retrieved code snippets and conversation history. All right, now I'm in the notebook and pretty much I am using the exact same notebook that was published in Langchain's official blog. And uh, I will uh, only make very marginal, uh, very few uh, changes towards the end of this notebook. So initially you need to, uh, you need to install all these uh, packages, Langchain, uh, OpenAI, Tik Token. Here DeepLake is uh, what we will be using for our vector storage. And in the next step, we need to embed the code base, that is all the text of the code base. And for that, we will be using OpenAI embeddings. And that's why we are uh, importing it here, Langchain embeddings.openai, import OpenAI embeddings. Now, uh, for the embedding in, the, in this example, we used uh, OpenAI embeddings, but there are many other embeddings uh, options such as Cohere embeddings and hugging face embeddings uh, from specific other models but uh, uh, openai embeddings is of course one of the one of the best that you can use and in case you are wondering about what uh, that is uh, this is the official page uh, from in from openai 
What are embeddings? OpenAI text embedding measures the relatedness of text strings. Embeddings are commonly used for search, clustering, recommendation, anomaly detection, diversity measurement, classification. So an embedding is a vector of floating point numbers. The distance between two vectors measure their relatedness. Small distance suggest high relatedness and large distances suggest low relatedness. That's the whole purpose of uh, this vector embedding. And next uh, for the vector storage uh, that we'll be using DeepLake for, uh, you need to get the token from DeepLake because we will be saving the vectors uh, within DeepLake. So um, when you create an account with DeepLake uh, from their website, you will uh, immediately get an API token. Just put that uh, token right here and run this command activate loop login dash t and put, then put the token and then you uh, you are logged in from your local or uh, cloud machines uh, ide and next you need to git clone the repository and that's what this line is doing right here and this is our main repository of the twitter algorithm and uh, as a comment says that whenever you want to uh, apply the same process on any other repository whatsoever you just replace this line with your repository that is all and uh, after we uh, git clone it then the next uh, load all the files inside the repository and that's what this block is doing and in this block the main thing to note is this text loader uh, which is coming from langchain to load all the text from the code base so langchain has a variety of so-called document loader such as uh, a PDF, HTML, Notion, YouTube, etc., which help with bringing in external information to Langchain. Here we are using a very simple text loader to load and read the text files. So root dir, uh, this one, uh, this variable right here, is the one where our entire Twitter repository is located in in the local machine, and I'm just applying ways.walk here. And uh, with that, I will get the file name, dear path, and dear names, etc. And then uh, with the text loader, I'm just passing that uh, dear path and file with path ways.path.join. And here in this line, just note uh, this particular uh, method load and split method. So this comes from this is one of the built in method in Langchain. Uh, once you create this loader, which is an instance of the text loader module or text loader class, indeed. So this load and split uh, method internally invokes uh, two uh, methods, split documents and create documents. Split documents uh, extracts the content and metadata from the input documents, splits the content into smaller components, and then uh, create documents is responsible for creating new document object from the split text components. So that's what these uh, load and split method does uh, in the in Langchain. And after this step, uh, that is now that we have uh, loaded our document, we need to split the text up so that we don't run into token limits when we retrieve relevant document information. So in below, uh, below here, uh, the character text splitter is being used in the example where the text is split by a single character. You can also uh, different. You can also use different text splitters and different token mentioned in the documentation of Langchain. In this case, the code is splitting the documents in chunk size of 1000 characters with no overlap between the chunks. Next very important step is executing the indexing. This will take about 4 minutes to compute embedding and upload to active loop active loop is part of data lake so uh, data lake is used here for document storage for vector stores and vector stores is one of the most important components of building indexes we have many options like pinecone elastic search atlas db etc deep lake is one of them uh, while deep lake can store embeddings it is capable of storing any type of data indeed it is a fully fledged serverless data lake with a version control query engine and streaming data loader to deep learning frameworks so now with uh, this line right here we create the vector store that is a variable db here to use as the index and one particular thing to note here that is this data set path is actually the cloud link in data lake and uh, it starts with hub and colon and you see this uh, david bun this is the user name actually so in this case because i'm using the official blog from langchain 
so there uh, this is this is what was given but when you create your own account in data lake this will be your username and uh, then whatever repo that you are using and so this is where uh, this uh, vector store will be saved and you can actually check that by going to the link in uh, data lake so after you have defined your db variable right here and then in the next step uh, this line that is here uh, load the data set construct the retriever and construct the conversational chain so this is what this line is doing and uh, next once you construct a vector store it's very easy to construct a retriever so now uh, basically we will expose the vector store index in a retriever interface and uh, that's what you see right here retriever equal to db as retriever and this is what the official documentation of langchain talks about retriever uh, so the retriever interface is a generic interface that makes it easy to combine documents with language models this interface exposes a get relevant documents method which takes in a query which is a string and returns a list of documents uh, please see below for a list of all the retrievers supported and uh, further a uh, retriever it's a way of storing data such that it can be queried by a language model the only interface this object must expose is a get relevant text method which takes in a string and returns a list of documents and a quick word on these uh, search keywords that we are using right here as part of this retrieval process so the search keywords are any parameter you want to send when performing the actual search to retrieve text there are two search types you can choose by default the vector store retriever uses similarity search where it selects text chunk vectors that are most similar to the question vector if the underlying vector st uh, vector store support maximal marginal relevant search you can specify that as a search type where it optimizes for similarity to query and diversity among selected documents C uh, is being used right here that is uh, search keywords maximal marginal relevance equal to true and otherwise uh, distance metric is cosine fetch k 100 all right now uh, these uh, filter method this is another important part so you can uh, specify user defined uh, filter function in uh, deep lake filters and this is one of those custom user defined function so basically there are two filters here uh, first one is filter based on the source code and also the filter based on the extension so i have uh, uh, scala and python in my metadata as a filter basically the purpose of this filter method is to filter the data set according to the custom uh, filter function and uh, the filter function takes sample as argument and returns true or false if sample should be included in the result uh, that's the mechanism and with that we are pretty much uh, towards the end of this notebook and um, in the official blog they have uh, this list of uh, question that will be asked to the model and the model will query the entire code base of this twitter algorithm and find me the answer of this so obviously uh, these uh, the answer of these questions was given in the blog the link of which i will give in the description of this video you can check the answer but uh, in this notebook i am going to ask some different questions because the answer of these ones are already there so i just wanted to check some different questions here but before uh, going into the question answering the module that we need for that is this one conversational retrieval chain uh, this is the module with which we will query the code base and uh, so you uh, create an instance first of the model uh, that's this line i am using here gpt4 uh, actually i am yet to get the gpt4's uh, api access so uh, this is official blog so i changed it to gpt3.5 turbo for my questions and um, then you create an instance of these uh, conversational retrieval chain with this line qa equal to so this qa becomes my instance of this module and this module takes two parameters mainly on my model which is uh, gpt4 right here and also the retriever retriever we have already defined before um, by including all the search keywords right here now one quick note on conversational retrieval chain that uh, a related module uh, to this module is a retrieval qa chain which you may see many times when working with langchain 
So the only difference between conversational retrieval chain and retrieval QA chain is that this module that is conversational retrieval chain allows for passing in of a chat history which can be used to allow for follow-up questions. So one question I asked is uh, give me the workflow key points for constructing your home timeline that is uh, when you open Twitter homepage um, in your app or in the browser the things that you see uh, what is the algorithm of that. So that's my question and uh, what I do is uh, that's given in a list format and what I do is just um, I go to uh, each of the each of the list element right here in this uh, loop but actually here I because I have just one element it's just single loop. And then you uh, bring in QA that we have defined earlier, pass the question and also pass chat history. And uh, chat history dot append question result, you get the result and you just uh, take the answer from the result and you append to a chat history. And then I'm printing these, um, both the question and the result. So let's see what uh, it replies. And remember, I'm not using GPT-4. GPT-4 answer will be even better. Right now I'm using the API of uh, gpt uh, three uh, three point five turbo, uh, which is uh, used for Chat GPT, and uh, so these these are the answer I got for the uh, how the workflow workflow algorithm is determined. The home mixer service is used to construct the construct and solve Twitter's home timelines, which is indeed true. Home mixer is their internal name. If you go through the Twitter algorithm code base, you will find a detail uh, detail section, a lot of files within the home mixer folder and that's what this answer is referring to then uh, for for you recommendation algorithm in home mixer goes through several uh, stages including fetching candidates from underlying candidate source filtering out unwanted candidates applying uh, decorations and hydrating features then tweet search system early bird is used to do home timeline in network tweet retrieval anyway you can go through this entire list of uh, step by step of how this home mixer is determined and another question i asked is does elon that is elon musk has special status in twitter algorithm now we uh, know that uh, in the original twitter uh, algorithm that they published initially uh, there was indeed people indeed found the code that was there uh, for the special status when elon tweets anything but uh, within it seems that within few hours the Twitter algorithm the code repository deleted those parts so now you will not find in the latest branch in the master branch you will not find those special status of Elon tweeting anymore uh, so my current question is that and the answer will be based off the latest status of the code base because I have downloaded the latest commit so the answer in this case is there is no evidence to suggest that Elon Musk has a special status in the Twitter algorithm. However, uh, his high number of followers and engagement on the platform may contribute to his tweets being more visible and popular. But now the thing that I was still, uh, talking about, if you go to the GitHub uh, commit history and uh, you will see in one of the pull requests uh, that this part was actually deleted. So this is the one that I'm talking about. That here within the home mixer functional component decorator home tweet a uh, home tweet type predicates dot scalar you will find this section uh, wh where the, based on these conditions there will be special status of those tweets so if author is Elon author is power user author is uh, Democrat author is Republican now in the, the this pull request was particularly for deleting that part and that's uh, i'm looking at the file changes in that particular commit and as you can see in the commit uh, these parts were deleted and uh, the answer that i got from uh, my question uh, right now is based on the latest commit and uh, there the answer is that there is no evidence of a special status of elon tweeting uh, but that was the story behind that Elon tweeting has indeed had indeed special status but that's no more the case in the latest commit of this repo. So anyway, so uh, yeah, looks like it's working pretty beautifully and I have to say this is a brilliant application of Langchain because you can apply the same process on any repository, any GitHub repository to understand the code uh, no matter how long and how large the repository is. So that's a wrap for this video. Do stay tuned because I plan to do many more Langchain videos over the coming weeks. So see you in the next one.